With the southeast light winds forecast this week, the sky is the limit. The offshore fishing should be good for wahoos and tuna. Along the coast, all the jetties are on fire. And if you're interested in bass, they are starting to group up after coming off the bed. So get ready because it's time for the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to another week on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. We're your hosts, Bree Gabrielle and Captain Rick Murphy with brand new reports to get you out there fishing this fine Easter weekend. Right, Rick? You're absolutely Easter. right. <laughs> you know what? I hope the Easter egg bunny comes to the jetties. I hope the Easter egg bunny comes and walks down along the beach and lays a lot of beautiful fishing eggs fishing so that eggs. we can have great fishing from years to come. What that, do you think about that? That sounds awesome. We're going to be doing that saltwater gospel this uh, this weekend. All right. Yes, we will. All right before we get down to business, let's check in with our favorite workbench wonder, Dave Farrell, to see what specials he has for us today. I, I, I just like all the adjectives you come up for me. I'm a wonder now. You're a wonder. I'm a wonder. You what? leave us wondering every week, Dave. We're wondering about frogs. We're going to be talking about <laughs> catching bass on frogs today. All so. right. One That's of my special. favorite things to do. Special things. All right, well, Rick, I hear big things are happening in the Lower Fresh region on Lake Travis, Decker, LBJ, Choke <clears throat> Canyon, Fayette County, Somerville, and of course, Falcon. So let's get to talking with Matt Reed on those details. All right, guys, let's get this week kicked off. <clears throat> I'm going to start off with the reports uh, from Brian Cotter in the Austin area, the lakes in that area. Uh, Lake Travis has been good. You want to work the backs of the pockets and creek with texture rig soft plastics like lizards, crawls, and finesse worms. Uh, watermelon and green pumpkin. Uh, dip that tail chartreuse. It seems to make a make a lot of difference. A lot of the fish are post spawn, but still plenty on the beds as well. Uh, Lake Decker's been fishing great. Bigger ones have been on the chew. He says best bite, best bait has been four and five inch worms and green pumpkin and watermelon with red flakes. A frog is getting some bites in the shallow water as the bullfrogs are out now. Like LBJ is also fishing well. Skipping boat docks with jigs and Texas rig soft plastic is catching some big ones. Shallow cranks on the bulkheads will get some bites as well. There are also some post spawn fish have already moved out on the deeper rocks and they're biting shaky heads or jigs out there. Uh, Mike Bates sent me a report from Choke Canyon. Uh, majority of the bass have finished the spawn. There's just a few old outs left. Uh, how good the fishing is depends really on how the wind is. Light wind allows them to move around and catch a whole lot of fish during the day. Uh, the high wind gusts are locking you down right now in areas that, that, that produce your numbers because you just beat them to death in those areas. The bite's still really good. Uh, shad spawn is beginning in the mornings. Look for those white birds and fish those areas with chatterbaits and spinnerbaits. The rest of the day, Carolina rigs and Texas rigs are working in that 10 to 15 foot range on the main lake. Greg Boyk sent me a report from Fayette County. Uh, still finding a few fish shallow on lipless cranks and swim jigs. Most of them have finished up and are out on the deeper structure. Carolina rigs, drop shots and big shaky head paired with stick baits or flukes and watermelon or green pumpkin magic has been best for those deeper fish. Uh, if you like clipping wood, you can still catch a few on a dark colored uh, creature bait. Lake Somerville, shad spawn still rolling. Uh, concentrate on those shallow rocky areas uh, with a you know, square build or spinner bait. That's where those shad are spawning on those rocks. And uh, there's a lot of activity you know, early in the morning in that one to six foot of water. I've got a couple of pictures there of the clients of mine down in Falcon with some of my favorite bass. Uh, you know, those are Brian and Paul have got two great big old tattooed fish. Those are always so cool when you catch one that has the black marks on them. That is neat. Dude, what is that? Why did they do that, Matt? You know, I, I don't know, Rick. You can read a thousand theories. Uh, they're perfectly healthy. Uh, I tend to notice it down there early in the year. Uh, and that's mostly when I see it. So, uh, and, and there was quite a bit of it early this spring. I, I do not have a good answer for that, but the fish are healthy and there's not a thing in the world wrong with you can't feel that on their skin or anything it's just a, a, a pigment you know situation that's cool all right tell us about the kitty that's cats cool. all right uh ram reyes is sent me a catfish report from down in falcon <clears throat> bigger catfish are post spawn moving out of the deeper water 
live bait and cut bait are working well in that 20 to 25 foot range. And if you're going to use cut bait, it needs to be fresh carp or big gizzard shad. Uh, keeper cats are being caught anywhere from 5 to 20 foot on shrimp, stink bait, and small shad. He's also sent a report on alligator gar. It's warming up, which kicks those gar into being active. Uh, they're starting to show up as it heats up more on rod and reel. And that, that fishing, that type of fishing is going to get better and better and better as it keeps getting warmer. Uh, bow fishing for the gar and carp is really hot right now. There's tons of carp up shallow, and, and that creates infinite targets for the bow hunters. Uh, that's some of Ram's customers with a picture of a big old alligator gar. Those things are just awesome. I mean, they're just giant creatures. I think I want to do that, make a Sportsman's Adventures out of that. I think that'd be cool. Why don't you go with me on that, Bree? Let's go. All right, Matt, well, thank you very much. We're going to go and take a look at the FiberTech hotspots from the Lower Fresh region. He says Fay County bass are beginning to group up on the main lake structure. Carolina rigs, drop shots, heavy shaky heads with green pumpkin plastics is going to be your best shot. There's also still some fish to be caught flipping dark creature baits on the shallow wood. So get out there and have some fun, Bree. All right, Rick, let's move into the Garmin Middle Coast region where you're going to get your redfish and trout fixed this weekend if Captain Bink Grimes has anything to do with it. Talk to us, Bink. All right, hey, it's mid-April. Uh, we're definitely moving into the spring and summer pattern. Our water temps have been running about 68 to 72 degrees. They hit a high this week of 73 degrees with all this southeast wind we're having, and that's pushing a lot of our trout to the shallows. Uh, when I say shallows, I mean uh, we're wading sand and grass on the south shoreline of West Matagorda Bay, it's to Santo Bay and San Antonio Bay. Trout are slicking on the shorelines, and that term slicking is when the fish feed and the oil from the bait fish show up, pop up on, like you're like you're dropping a, a a little drop of motor oil, and it just puts a sheen on it. And the good thing about that is uh, those fish are only slick when when a lot of the mullet and the menhaden come in. To the bays and and that tells you that uh late spring and summer is is showing up uh it's a sweet aroma it smells a lot like cut grass which we're everybody's starting to do down here mowing their grass or watermelon but the smell and the sheen it kind of tells you hey if, if you're if you're smelling that there's fish feeding in the area that same pattern's holding along the south shoreline of west matagorda bay the reefs and sand and grass pockets are holding trout on the incoming tide on top waters and live shrimp the rocks in Freeport are holding good numbers of trout, according to uh, Mike Siegel. And then those rock port anglers, they're finding good trout while wading on custom corkies, mere little, little johns, or they're working drop-offs, they're, they're working uh, the flats, and uh, man, just having a really good topwater bite. Most anglers along the Middle Coast are playing catch and release, and that's a great thing. It's only going to get better in the coming days with our higher tides and warmer temps. Uh, redfish in the spring has uh, still been a mainstay. We've got scattered reds all over the flats. All this high water that we're getting from these southeast winds are pushing them back in the sloughs and bios. And uh, so we're going back there and getting them. Uh, shallow mud flats off the ICW have been solid for redfish. Uh, the patterns worked even on the windiest of days. We had gusts up to uh, 25 to 40 knots today, matter of fact. So it, it's been it's been gusty, but uh, forecast for the rest of the East, Easter weekend is really really looking good in matagorda most of our boaters are hitting points and structures along the south shore line with live shrimp you'll stop for a little while for five minutes and move if you don't get a bite kind of like riding a school bus you just keep making all these stops a fish here a fish there uh it, it's just been one of those deals when you've got high tides uh those fish are scattered they're they're, they're really hadn't been concentrated bull reds have been all over the beaches and jetties guys on foot have tossed big chunks of crab and mullet in the first gut on the high tide, the beach, and, and then the jetty anglers have been washing, walking the ocean side and doing the same thing. Funny thing about redfish pattern this this time of year, you wake up one day, uh, one day they're there, tomorrow they're gone. There'll be redfish everywhere. It happened to me last week. Uh, all uh, one day, I mean, we caught them uh, every drift. The next day, they were nowhere to be found, and for no apparent reason, it's just spring red fishing. Our guy, Tom Brown, he's been anchoring in about a foot of water and waiting for the tide to bring the fish to him. His best baits, he's been throwing a cut mullet, and he's been sitting on anchor. Uh, photo there, those back lakes uh, have been the place to be for redfish with a higher tide. It's an April thing, and uh, uh, it's only going to get better. 
will go offshore. Offshore, uh, there hadn't been a, whole, a really uh, a good offshore uh, bite out there just because, man, we've had winds gusting the 25 knots, and it's tough to get on the big pond out there. But Mike Siegel of Real Thrill Charter said those, he's been tight on the uh, beach front for those redfish in about 35 foot of water. Lots of bonnethead and black tip sharks are eating sardines in that same water. Uh, the reminder, those bull redfish or uh, fish over 28 inches are only legal to harvest uh, in state water. So if you catch any outside of nine nautical miles, like say when you're uh, trying to catch red snapper, you cannot uh, harvest and keep uh, a bull redfish in federal waters. So that's another good week in the Garmos uh, Middle Coast region. We're looking for a great Easter weekend. And uh, we're, we will have, in Matagorda, we're having Easter sunrise services at 630 at Snapper's uh, restaurant there. So if uh, anybody uh, wants to watch the sunrise on Easter Sunday, come on out and we'll have a good time. All right, Bink, have a good Easter. Uh, we appreciate it very much. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the mirror lure hotspots from uh, the Middle Coast region. Trout are best on the shallow flats around the green bayou on top waters and bass assassins. Redfish are best in the back lakes on natural baits and jigs tipped with fish bites. Sunrise service, that sounds absolutely beautiful. Yes, it does. Man, all right, we are ready to bring you into the lower coast region next, but first, Dave is rigged, ready, and prepared at the workbench for some rigs and techniques. Know how, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. certainly am. Remember that little frog? Yeah. Hello, my honey, hello, my baby, hello, my ragtime gal. Wow. I, can't, I can't get a frog to sing here, though. Just that, me. That was awesome. Proud of you, Dave. More adjectives for me, the singer. It is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick, feel everything. Bahio sunglasses, blue light blocking, radically clear lenses. Garmin, plot your paradise. Fibertex, leaders in fiberglass fabrication and repair. Sportsman's Adventures, fishing for adventure. Berkeley, your fish, our science. And Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats, eat, sleep, fish. Well, before the break, Dave teased us with a little frog noise. So guess what, Dave? Uh, <laughs> we're, I guess we're talking froggy here. Yes, we are. We're talking about frogs. You know, it's springtime. It's you know getting later in the spring. The water temperature's getting warmer, and uh, the frogs start moving. There's bass on the spawn still a little bit, bass off the spawn. So, you know, you got two kinds of different frog bites right now, and but they're still eating the frogs. And... Uh, They'll, you know, it gets better and better as the summer goes on and the vegetation gets even more and more. But right now you can catch some really big post-spawn bass and even spawning bass on a frog in shallow water, you know, two, three feet, you know, under five feet, you know, depending on the clarity of the water where the fish are. But when the, if the fish are still on the bed, uh, you're getting a pretty much of a, a defensive strike. You know, they're just running up and popping it and uh, not trying to eat it. But... Uh, as they come off the bed, they're hungry. You know, they've been sitting there, they haven't been eating for a while, been right. taking care of the nest and everything. So when they come off there, they're getting hungry and they're wanting to eat bigger things. So a frog is a nice big bait for them to eat. Now there's like four different types of frogs. You got the popper, let's get a prop, popper frog first. You know, if you're fishing in a place, you know, especially in the early spring when the vegetation's not that thick, it's not all the way to the surface, you can get away with using a popper frog, something with a big mouth on it pushes a lot of water usually, makes a lot of noise. How do you like to work it? You pop it and then well, let it lay? Yeah, it depends on what the fish are like in that day. You know, sometimes um, you can go and, and pop a frog and keep it moving and walk it, you know, and uh -huh. walk it back to you and they'll pile on it. Other times they won't eat it until it's not moving at all. You'll make a cast and just have to let it sit for th three to five seconds, pop it once, let it sit for three, five, six, seven seconds, pop it again you know it depends on what they're wanting that day now that, that's a that's a hollow body frog and that's made to go through vegetation uh hydrilla bread you like that doing an imitation kick, of brie <laughs> running <laughs> after those kids <laughs> the uh the uh you know it, you got these uh you got these really nice hooks on the on the inside it's a hollow body frog so when he squeezes down on it he's going to get those two hooks there uh this one 
a lot of the ones with a nice little pointy nose on them, they're the ones that you yeah. want to run through all the vegetation, your lily pads and whatnot. Sometimes you might want to modify those hooks if you're getting, uh, if you're not getting a good hookup ratio on them, but it's usually your fault because <laughs> right. a lot of guys, you know, when you're fishing these frogs, you know, your frog is the lure and a bobber, you know, you're watching that frog. And when that frog disappears, you know, the guy likes to slam it home right quick, right. you know? And a lot of times, because we're using heavier gear, heavy braid, we want to use really heavy braid for this kind of fishing, uh, they'll jerk it right out of their mouth, you know, because the braid doesn't stretch. And if you're tight on that fish and you have it, and, and you feel the weight and give it all you got with 65 pound test braid, you have a good chance of uh, pulling it out of them. But this isn't the uh, getting to the going down the line of frogs. You had the other, the little sinker frog there. Right. Uh, these are frogs that you can either run on. That's the logger toad from Bass Assassin. You can either run that on the surface. You got to keep it moving if you want to keep it up on the surface. Right. Otherwise, it's a frog bait that you you'll let sink. Right. Like any other Texas rig soft bait, still looks like a frog. But and you can hop it around the bass bed there and there. They want to protect their eggs from the frogs and whatnot. So they'll I jump on it. I learned from logger too that you can fish this with or without the tail. Oh yeah. You can break that tail off if you want it to be more uh, noise making and less drag. Right. The tail if you put a single uh, one of these single magworm hooks in it, a four aught, that thing is almost neutral. Mm -hmm. That logger toad is just about neutrally, boy, and it takes a long time for it to sink. So, you know, it's a really good neutral point, but I like to buzz them across the top, especially, you know, through the vegetation and whatnot. Now, I, I mentioned the magworm hooks, you know, you're gonna want, uh, because we're using the 65 pound drag, because we're using a, a, a rod that's a heavy action rod with a fast tip, you know, mm -hmm. you, want it, you want it to be a stout rod to pull these fish out of the cover once you hook them. You wanna use a big hook, you know, a nice thick mag hook, you know, you don't want to use a thin wire hook. You want to use something double X, three X, you know, right. something that you can lift a eight pound bass covered in grass and lily pads and pepper grass or hay grass or whatever you're fishing in to pull them out. Um, right. Good time to fish uh, colors. You know, a lot of people say, you know, oh, I like this color. I like that color. You know, the world is your oyster. I kind of like to use uh, natural colored frogs. I like to use a you know, because they're all light on the bottom and they're dark on the top. Mm -hmm. now, on a dark overcast day, which is a great day to fish for frogs anyway, because, you know, they're all look at, they can look up and they don't have that sun shining in their eyeballs all day. If, if you use a, you know, a, a lighter colored frog on light, on, on, on sunny days and dark colored frogs on overcast days, that'll, that'll probably help you out. That's a good but, but they'll work, you know, I've, I've caught, everything on a white frog i've caught everything on just a jet black frog i think it doesn't really matter that much and when you're you, they were talking about the spawn shad as i mean the the, the shad spawning as well right. they get out in the middle of the lake and you can throw a top water soft-bodied frog a white one in all those shad they don't know it's not a, a shad they see something uh, struggling on the surface they'll eat it just as as well as they will any other top water plug when there's a bunch of shad around and you know it's always fun to watch them eat a frog yeah, you, whether man. it's a, sh a Anything shad bite, on top water, oh, you're it's, right that's my favorite thing to do rick so. yes i pretty. wish i looked as good as that frog running after my kids but that's just <laughs> way too pretty it's very toned yeah. there very it toned. is very toned <laughs> all right we've got some good inshore species for y'all in the lower coast region so captain kenny why don't you lay it out for us i think i want to throw a frog at perdido for some yellowfin so we went down here to our, our, our report here. Tell you what, we've had some really high winds and some other weather going on here. Normally it's like March and April we're here already, so it's kind of being late. So what you got to really look for here is uh, the weather patterns and stuff. So right now, if you're looking uh, inshore, we got some good numbers of black drum. We've been talking about this in like in Baffin Bay in the land cut and the trout bite is really picked up with water temps, you know, on the rise at four to five foot of water in the deeper grass beds. Um, the reason we're fishing on some black drum right now, we get these high winds, it blows the whole bay system out and you can start targeting these with some uh, bait or fish bites. So the black drums, not something we normally target all the time, but uh, like I said, everything's kind of been a month or so back. So the, the black drum are in good in baffin and the land cut. Live shrimp are really working well or dead shrimp. If you got some live shrimp and you're fishing for trout and the trout bite quits, go ahead and pinch your head off the shrimp and peel the shell back off to get a better scent in the water. 
put it directly onto like a quarter ounce to three quarter ounce jig head and lay it lay on the bottom. You can also use a Carolina rig, um, which is uh, really works really good. You might go to quarter ounce, three quarter ounce, and up to an ounce, depends on the current um, on this and let it lay right on the bottom. Sometimes you can see this current running through the oil guts or any of the side of that stuff on the land cut and pitch it right off two, three foot off that water where it's moving through. Don't pitch it up on the bank. Get it right off where they're moving. Those fish are going to be feeding up and down through there. And that's where uh, right now we're still catching the black drum. This might last another two, three weeks max. I, 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 but So we got a picture of a, fo a photo of a black drum right here. Moving to sheephead. Sheephead are still around the jetties uh, if weather's permitting. It's been really tough around there, but if you can, you get outside the calmer side. Live shrimp right there is working really good with a split shot. You pitch it in the washouts or tie a longer leader and a popping cork and let it set and drift along those edges of the rocks. Now, these fish won't hold much longer also. When the water keeps on warming up, they'll move off kind of like the drum will. But right now, it's what's really biting with the, with the winds and the clarity of the water we got going on. So you want to target them. Right now is the right time to do it. The good thing is the trout fishing is really turned on, which is a good sign. There's really good numbers and some solid fish being caught. Uh, and there's some really big ones being out, you know, way past the slot size. Right now, they've been holding that four to five foot of water in the grass beds and the sand pockets. Uh, throw saltwater assassin with an eighth ounce jig head. Uh, working those grass beds, let it dip down, hit the grass beds out, get through the sand pocket, pop it back up through there. Uh, this is really particularly working well with some lighter winds, which we haven't had, but it's going to be coming between the northerns and, and the south wind blowing. And if you get that trout green water, that's when it's going to happen. It's going to be happening here real soon. Um, if you have a the color water, which is probably going to be going to popping cork, if it's off color, go to popping cork, live shrimp. You know, pop it really hard with the tr for the trout and let that trout bite get going. Uh, there's a lot of good fish in that 17 to 23 inch size, which is the new slot size for down here until August of 2023. Um, so that'll work really good. We've been catching some oversized trout also. We've got a good photo here of a trout that was released. Nice. Moving That's a off, big fish, boy. Yeah, it's a good solid one. There's, yeah. there's been some good solid, even the 17 inch fish we're catching. Rick and everybody watching, there's some really solid, heavy, nice, fat fish. I mean, 17 inch fish are weighing two, three pounds. So, going in the state, the offshore, don't have a whole bunch. It's been rough, but the state water fishing for snapper still remains good. You might be able to get to the beach. You might be able to get out of there. And it's going to be calming down here a little bit with the higher winds and sea conditions. Uh, we're going back to some uh, heavier stuff with some bank weights. Um, and you got to get down there and get, you get those fish down there. It, it lays a big silt film down the bottom. So the best thing to do is get your fresh bait out of the marinas, which is the best thing to do. You get assortment really helps. Get your squid, sardines, cigar minnows, or if you got any bycatch, whether you're fishing in Corpus down here in Port Manso, we got our boats in South Padre. If you can get any spot croakers or piggies or anything off the boat, that works really good. Get an assortment, put them right on the bottom, let it lay on the bottom. It's not as fun, but that's where the fish are at. And they're gonna be a silt layer and it's gonna clean up here real quick. And when it does clean up, then you go back into using some stro jig heads and stuff and getting the suspended fish. All right. Thank you so much, Chad. Bree and I are looking forward to seeing you in about another month. Can't wait. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the shallow sport, lower coast hotspots. He says inshore, Baffin Bay and the land cut continues to produce good numbers of black drum and trout bite is also there. Port Mansfield to Araro City. Aurora City has been excellent on trout in four to five feet of water using saltwater assassin sea shads. And then offshore, it's been a little bit tough to get out because the state water snapper still remains and continues to produce. That weather seems mm. to be messing the boys up. Very blowy. All right, the yeah, Shallow man. Sport Boats is hosting their 21st annual owners fishing tournament May 13th through 14th in South Padre. This event has become known as the biggest and best owners tournament on the Gulf Coast. Hundreds of teams compete for over a quarter million dollars worth of prizes, including a brand new shallow sport boat, Suzuki motor, and McLean trailer package. For more information, scan the QR code on the screen or go to shallowsporttournament.com. That is going to be a blast. We're so excited. We'll be there. All right, up next, the upper fresh and middle fresh regions are coming in hot. Put me in. So stay hooked. Put me in, coach. That's Put it. Me I'm in. ready. Remember to keep up with everything fishing in Texas. Make sure to head on over to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and to see new fishing adventures. Along with reports, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy. We'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by 
Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The Pest Lures, period. Island Lures, Tournament Tackle. Rodan, set it, forget it. Catch more fish. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fish mapping, entertainment. Shallow Sport, Berkeley, your fish, our science. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. And Penn, let the battle begin. Power pole shallow water anchors aren't just for fishing. I use mine every day at the boat ramp. First, I get my bow rope ready and secured to my boat. Second, after the boat floats off the trailer, I walk the boat down the dock, push the back of the boat off the dock, and lower my power pole anchors. I then secure my bow line to hold the front of the boat. Using the power pole like this is a great way to prevent dings and dents and scratches on my boat and keeps my boat tight to the dock without having to tie two lines off. Another great way to use my power pole at the docks, especially when they're busy, is sometimes after a charter, I'll come to the ramp and every slot will be full of boats. But over to the east or west of the ramp, there'll be a beach. I take my bow of my boat and beach it, lower my two poles, climb out of my boat, go get my truck, back in an open slot, go back to my beach, jump in my boat, load it up on the trailer, and I'm out of there. And that is the power pole tip. There's some good tips. What do you think, Rick? I think the boys did a good job. Me too. All right, we're talking about Lake Athens, Levon, and of course, Lake Fork in the Upper Fresh Region this weekend. So let's see what Mike McFarland has us reeling in. Go for it, Mike. Hey, Bree. Hey, Rick. Nice to hear from you guys and be on the show. Really excited, man. Lake temperatures are really uh, kicking off. Water temperature from 60 to 64. Last Monday's rain really brought the lake up about three inches. And our current lake right now is 39688. Um, it's just really good, water clarity being zero to one foot. No better time for that water than during the spawn. So most of the creeks and drains are a little bit dirty, but it's settling. And the main lake is really actually clean. It's the color that most of us guys would call Lake Fort Green. Um, you know, we did have a cool down in three huge, huge days. I mean, the winds were unbelievable, um, but it really didn't have that much effects overall. Um, Big bass are still biting, just like last week. The main lake points, they're really on fire. The shallow reefs using big glide baits and seven inch line through swim baits. In fact, this morning, we once again had five giant fish within 30 minutes um, for 27 pounds. So the best fishing right now is really on the points and reefs in the flats in the shallow water, one to six feet. Um, I expect this bite to continue for probably several weeks. Um, a lot of the fish are moving into the wood, wooded shallow backwaters to spawn and that does take them off those main lake points. Um, the full moon this week will yield many spawning bass and really should improve the overall general shoreline fishing. Um, so if you're fishing in the backwaters, you know, try spinner baits, chatter baits, uh, the color chartreuse and white, plain white. There's a really good search bait. It's a perfect bait to first, you know, find some fish. Once you do get a bite or two, slow down just a little bit. Um, Texas rig VM chopsticks, which is like a, a stick bait, uh, Cinco's in Texas smoke, watermelon candy, watermelon red, really hard to beat. And then, of course, my favorite right now, green pumpkin. Don't forget to dip the tail chartreuse with a spike at dip. That makes all the difference in the world in how many bites and how well they eat it. Um, the Zoom Trick Worms Wacky Style, if you really like the fish Wacky Style, that's a really good bait. And really the same colors, the green pumpkin chartreuse tail. And I'm hearing grapevine that June Bug is also catching them real good, too. Um, one of my favorite ways, honestly, to catch the pre-spawn bass when we have low lake like this is to Texas rig a Zoom baby brush hog or a Strike King Rage Craw and just pitch to the stumps. Um, you'll see lots of shallow stumps. The fish are spawning next to those stumps. Be sure and go really slow. Be very thorough. A lot of times a repeated cast to those same stumps, I mean 10, 12 times, bump the stump that triggers the strike, the strike itself. So with the water temperatures really beginning to warm quickly, you know, in the future here, I really expect to see shad spawn starting. Um, we'll probably talk about that in the next report. But look for the blue heron birds. You see those blue herons on the shorelines. They're really showing you these precious commodity fishing areas. Um, shad colored underspins, square bills really work best for this. Even a spinner bait can be good. But I tell you what, it's time to break out the top waters. So get your tackle box ready. Get the yellow magic poppers and the head and zero spooks. Get them hooks sharpened up because topwater season is almost here. 
Remember, part of that top water that's really important is to match the hatch. That means the color and the size. So pay attention. If you can see the bait, do your best to match it. Um, here are a few pictures of some really nice fish caught on the No Label brand glide bait in the color McFarland Special. All right, let's talk about the crappies, bub. Crappie, man. Crap Terry Moon is one of the best. And, you know, she says pretty much everything's the same, but the fish are really staged now. One to eight feet, catching them on jigs with minnows under a bobber or slow rolling a road runner just off the bottom around the stumps and the creek channels. Really the same areas that we're catching a lot of the big bass on beds. Um, but the next full moon, really look for all species to be spawning. And the, as the, now we've finally reached the water temperatures where they're supposed to be. Here's a few pictures from Terry from her latest catch with some great clients and a big old sack of crappie. Nice, looking good. All right, one more thing to go. What you got, crappie and white bass? Tell me about it. I, I do, I've got the, um, you know, everything again at Levon is really the same. Water temperatures fluctuating between 55, 58 degrees. Um, the, the, really the lake has risen a lot. So you can do the same thing for the crappie in the backwaters, but watch for those the white bass, they're really, that rising water got them going crazy. They're spawning up in the creeks, flukes, inline spinners like rooster tails. You can really catch a bunch of those fish. All right, tell me about the largemouth bass in Athens quickly. Yes, we'll go very fast. Athens is on fire. They're on beds. It's crystal clear water. Man, go just spend some time there. It's a beautiful lake. Run some shoreline. Look in the water. You'll see them on the beds. They're pretty easy to catch. Texas rig beaver style baits, colors white, chartreuse, natural colors, green pumpkins, and crawfish. They're truly my favorites. But bed fishing is a blast at Athens right now. Mike, great job this week, week three. You're a quick learner. I love that about you, bub. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Upper Fresh region. Mike says that this week, the hot fishing is once again the world famous Lake Fork where giant bass are being caught daily on main lake points with large swim baits and glide baits. And then the spawn has also started and the shallow wooded flooded backwaters are filled with both big bass and giant Texas sized crappies. Great time on the Goat Lake. Greatest of all time. Of course. <laughs> Just checking to make sure you're up with the... I know. Okay. I've been referred to from time to time. Oh, as the as goat? As the goat. Most of the time I think it was the a woat. nanny goat. The woat. <laughs> oh, nanny the goat. Worst Billy of all goat. Time. The worst time. Come on. <laughs> Really go. Come on, come on. Come All right, wait till y'all see what's coming out of the Startron Middle Fresh region on OH Ivy, Man, LBJ, <laughs> Toledo Ben, and Sam Rayburn. I know Matt is definitely impressed, to say the least. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not touching that one, Bree. I'll let you handle Captain Rick on that one. Um, I'm just gonna stick to talking about bass here. So kicking it off this week, uh, we're gonna start on OH Ivy. That place just. It continues to blow me away. The big bass are continually showing up to, to the party there. It's uh, it's really insane. I've never seen anything like it. It seems like 13 is the new 10 there. So here's the scoop. A lot of these giant bass are being caught sight fishing, but just it's important to keep in mind that that's not the only way to catch them, right? There's always multiple patterns going on any given lake at one time. And I'm getting reports that swim baits and stick worms around the brush are also really great tactics right now, especially on these windy days when sight fishing is just not an option. So break out those bass that have some swim baits and the fat jobs and get in those shallow areas on those big flats around the bushes and have a blast catching some of those giants. Speaking of giants, I'm going to kick off the show this or my report this week with a, a photo of yet another 13.86 pound giant bass caught by Mr. Anwar Sanders. Congratulations, Anwar. That's a heck of a bass. Uh, he and my good buddy, Mr. Clark Blakelock, went out to OH Ivy last week, and uh, this was, I think they caught this thing on the first day. I mean, just what an incredible deal. Now, uh, moving down to LBJ, uh, Jared Poole tells me that the bass are mostly post spawn now at LBJ. So get your top water plugs ready. That's a fun time to fish. Those fish are cruising the shallows and they're looking for an easy meal. Give it to them with those top water walking baits. Coming on over to San Rayburn, kind of a similar deal. It's frog time. The abundant shoreline cover on Rayburn is frog fishing heaven, as you know if you've been there. Uh, right now, many bass are on the bed still, but there are a lot cruising the shallows that are post spawn that are gonna be ready to crush that easy frog meal. Uh, so that's gonna be my go-to bait this week at Rayburn. This is, this is the time of the year 
when you can really commit to throwing that frog all day long and it's not a matter of if but when you're going to get in the right area and get some really explosive strikes and you never know when you're going to catch a huge fish on that frog right now and then for a follow-up bait you can't beat that bass that's had some fat job rigging it weightless uh, i like either green pumpkin or watermelon red those are my go-to colors something real natural if a bass misses that frog burn it in real quick and fire that uh, fat job in there He's as good as caught, man. That, those things just work incredibly well. Now, uh, over here at Toledo Bend, the bass are choking down frogs right now as well. But it has mostly been the smaller fish. The lake level stayed down a little bit this year. Uh, and so some good grass is trying to grow, which is great and wonderful, and that's fun to throw those frogs in. But the bigger bass are still hanging out in that 5 to 10 foot kind of outside the grass, around the outside of those spawning areas. And many of them are post-spawn now. So they're in a bit of a funk. They're kind of scattered a little bit, but man, you start covering water with that whoop eye crawl out in front of those uh, spawning areas and five to 10 foot, and you can catch them. You can catch some really good fish right now. I like watermelon, the new watermelon red blue color, throwing it on a 3 ounce Texas rig. And uh, I'm making big sweeps of the rod as I'm fishing this thing. So I can pump it up off the bottom and those big flapping claws kind of swim it back down to the bottom and helps call those big fish over to it because they're kind of scattered along these areas. It helps call them in to you uh, with those big flapping claws on that thing. It's a great bait. Uh, and many of the bites are going to come on the fall. So be really paying close attention to your line as that bait gets way back to the bottom, watching your rod and uh, your line and, and really be feeling for them because they might be on it when you pick it up. Now switching over to crappie, uh, Toledo Bend and Sam Rayburn, uh, the crappie are being caught a little deeper now. There are still a lot of the larger females up shallow, but the numbers seem to be better out about 10 to 15, maybe even 20 foot in some areas. And they will still be hanging around the trees in the woods. So you want to catch them using live minnows, fish real close to the bottom, or casting that sandfish assassin jigs out in the bluegrass or electric chicken covers. Now last but not least, the white bass. These little swimming fish tacos, man, they're a blast to catch anytime you get around them. I love those things. They're being caught on Toledo Bend in 10 to 20 foot of water using live minnows and jigging spoons, but they are a bit unpredictable right now. So basically, if you stay in that depth, looking around flat points around the main lake areas, you will come across some, but the thing is they're real nomadic. So they might not be where they were yesterday and they might not be in the same spot tomorrow, but the pattern is consistent. So just stay in that 10 to 20 foot on those flat points and keep those Garmin electronics running when you hunt them down, have a blast catching them. They're, they're great table fare. Get out there and get your stuff. All right. Thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Middle Fresh hotspots from the Middle Fresh region. Matt says that the Rodan Marine Systems hotspots are bass in the spawn and post-spawn phase, biting swim baits, stick worms, and topwater presentation. Big numbers of crappie, 10 to 15 feet of water near the bottom biting live minnows and bluegrass colored jigs. That, that bass, did that hurt your heart? Yeah, 13 man. what? <laughs> 13 Doesn't matter? Eight. 13, 13, 8. It's huge. You know what though? Seeing you dancing with white bass <laughs> in your hand. I, I just love seeing people catch fish. You too. I do too. <laughs> All right, Fish Bites Upper Coast Region is taking the reins next, and Dave Farrell is taking over the workbench for some shiny new products. What he needs got? to take me out and show me a fish with this only know, chop up. Only if you dance, Dave. I can dance. Boy. I know you can. You can I, sing. I can move. And sing. Well, I don't know about that. Still working workbench on it. wonder over there. Still working on it. Do it all. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Tin Cup Mountain Whiskey. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Fenwick, feel everything. Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. R&R Tackle, from our tackle box to yours and StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. So Dave, new products. Yeah. I see that you got the whoop-a-crawl. Whoop yeah, I was telling you during the break, I 
solid Look bass inhale color. it twice and that I was so sick. mesmerized the water was so clear I watched him eat it he spit it out he ate it again then spit it out and I went I didn't even set the hook <laughs> then he just swam away so Dave I know we got a video why don't we roll this video so that people can see all the different variations yep. that the whoop craw is doing yep you can do, fish it weightless or with a, a weighted hook and a spinner like that guy's doing as a search bait you know just throw it out and reel it back to you you can put it just on a regular hook and run it across the surface or put it on a jig and bounce it like a crawdad kind of type of deal or they can put it on a shaky head a little yeah, shaky head shaky head chatter bait chatter baits too yeah. and use it as a search bait and you know it's what really I cool because it's got the tapered body and uh you know all the ridges on it it really moves water and little cups on the end of those things on the yeah. end of the claws there, these, really. These little tiny skegs. Yeah, they're or whatever cup, they call, are. call them cups or whatever. Is that what you call them? Yeah, call them cups. It, it grabs the water and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it makes them move and then they're impregnated with the bang scent. And uh, you know, like I said, you can Texas rig them. They come in 13 colors and these are the five new ones there. So all right. go to bassassassin.com and get you a whoop all crawl. Whoop all crawl. Whoop all crawl, they whoop all. All right, tell me about this. Well, Fusion we got the radio. Fusion Apollo there. It's a really nice radio head for, you know, you, you can put it in a car if you want to, but it's made for a boat. Right. Uh, it's good for Apple Play. It's got a Fusion Link a Bluetooth in it. You can hook it up to all your other electronics on the boat through the NMAA 2030. It's got the built in Wi Fi, uh, digital signal processing, so, you know, it's really clear. Uh, total screen control with the front. You know, you can just touch the screen and, and make it play or stop or stop, you know, uh, pause, right. uh, which is great, you know, when you're, you hook up a fish and you want to quiet the boat down so everybody can hear what's going on. You just hit the screen. You can yeah. do it like that. It's got a multi-zone, uh, you know, four different zones, uh, XM, Sirius XM ready. Right. And so you can get your weather and everything on there. And, it, and it's now Garmin as well. So, you know, you can get uh, good service from Garmin. Exactly. Next, we got the H and H. You know, they have a thing called a Cocoho minnow that everybody <laughs> yeah, uses. You exactly. know, and uh, it, in Louisiana, especially, you know, they can catch them a lot, uh, trout and redfish and whatnot. And uh, but these are a gigantic Cocoho minnow and from H and H. The Cocoho minnow jig. You can catch it on tarpon, uh, cobia, a snapper, anything. And eat that thing. It's a six ounce jig with a one ounce bullet head. Uh, nine knot sea uh, sea guard hook, uh, you know, great for vertical jigging, casting, sight fishing, uh, anything. And it also has a little curly tail one as well, an eight yep. inch curly tail one. So you can go to H and H and look you up one of those. Get those Cocoho minnows, man. You think a ling would want to eat that? I imagine they would. I okay. imagine they would. Next, we got this uh, uh, the Berkeley Chapo in the mullet color. That's the this is the new salt water. Yeah. Chapo is not new. Right. To, but to this us. is the new mullet. This is the new mullet with the upgraded hardware. Correct. Have, it's got the 3X uh, anti rust Fusion 19 hooks on there. Uh, this bait comes in two sizes uh, three quarter ounce and the one ounce. I think that's the three quarter ounce you got right there. Uh, it's easy to use. What's great about this, you know, a lot of people have a problem walking the dog, you know, with a, with a stick bait uh, to make it work properly, you know guys who don't have any rhythm but then there's other guys you know like me who can do it pretty easily this one you don't have to worry about it all you gotta do is throw it out there and just reel it right back to you and that giant prop on there yeah. just plop 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 throws water everywhere yeah the concave part yeah. of this is yeah. what makes it's that a really nice that. and it plops too it makes a nice plopping sound so it drives them just drives them crazy brings fish in from all over the sides and you know because it's that new mullet color it's great for salt water that would be great in salt water or if you're catching even a big freshwater bass you know i can't wait to throw this offshore with tunas popping on oh yeah well yeah white bait right. and yeah. pilchers That's, it's they got, got plenty some, of hooks. Got pretty strong hooks on there so where do we go uh you go to berkeleyfishing.com berkeley-fishing.com don't forget the little dash in the middle fusion dot com i believe so yeah all right yeah all right brie well we got one more to go 
Rick, can you take any more whooping tonight? Man, <laughs> I feel like the whoop crawls up, crawled up my getting rear end. <laughs> all over the place. All right, flounder, trout, grouper, and wahoo. Oh my, the Fish Bites Upper Coast region sounds like a fun place to be fishing this weekend. So tell us how to get on them, Captain Weston. Hey guys, yeah, my, my, we're week three already and the water temps are feeling better by the day. Um, let's talk about some flounder over in Sabine Lake. That water is heated up from 67 up to 70 in just one week. So we've had some sunny weather, uh, warm south winds. A uh, fish the points and the oyster bars on the outgoing tide has been the rip lip time guys for these. The new penny three inch Berkeley Gulf Alive shrimp on a quarter ounce jig head has been putting them in the boat all week. Uh, all the accessible areas over around Seawall Park where you can still get in are still producing nice fish, but they're doing a bunch of construction, so you kind of kind of watch, you know, where you're at. As far as live bait goes, live finger mullet, as, as always, live finger mullet on a simple slip shot rig with about a half ounce egg sinker gets the job done every time. And we have a picture here with Manny. He's becoming a fan favorite. So he has great pictures and great reports with a trio of uh, flounder trout and redfish today. So uh, let's let's go over to talk about trout a little bit. Bolivar is reporting water temps in that same 70 degree range. And you know what that means. We're seeing more bait and more bait equals more fish, guys. The oil slicks will definitely become more present as will the birds. So watch for those telltale signs so that the bait is on the move. You'll, you'll be able to, to uh, target them then. Pay close attention to Hannah's Reef this week getting good reports out of that area that the east shoreline over at trinity bay is still a little hit and miss they've got some scattered fish this week live shrimp on a popping cork or soft plastics like a bass assassin sea shad in that electric chicken has been getting the job done another spot is uh the eagle punch the eagle point shoreline i'm sorry and that we can tell the spring spawn is on so it's only going to improve now going offshore Let's talk about Wahoo again. Uh, second time in three weeks because the bite is really on. It's staying hot. Uh, you know, while we're out there in the in the offshore, you know, we're out 80, 90, 100 miles like we told you before, Rick. So this new series, marine weather, is really important for us with this April weather. Storms are rolling through. It's a good way to keep, uh, keep yourself safe. You used to be on radar. I can only see 48 miles. Now I can see something coming from Canada. So, um, anyways, no cell service. Uh, it's a lifesaver. Now, targeting these fish in the 250 to 400 foot range has been the sweet spot this past week. Look for signs of bait before you spend a bunch of time trolling, guys. Uh, you know, the first thing is if you don't have that fish mapping, I highly recommend it. These possibilities are endless with the water tamp and everything. If if you go online, just look at it. It's amazing. So the schools. A blue runners or small bonita is what you're looking for as far as the wahoo are concerned. And when you pull up on a spot, take a look at your Garmin. Determine if there's bait even present. Don't waste a bunch of time. You know, so, it, and when you see the bait fish, they're going to show a little higher in the water column over rock piles and structure. Larger marks in and around these areas are going to be your desirable marks. They're going to be uh, the predator fish. So I like to try to troll the outside edge of the structure so you don't spook the fish. Wahoo will stay in an area where there's lots of bait, but you can run them off the rocks pretty easy with a bunch of boats on them. And uh, the the R&R tackle Wahoo Magnet is a fish favorite. Deep diving lures have also been great. We've been running a, a spread of naked ballyhoo and some rig with a bullet head, but they're all putting fish in a box, I guarantee you. And Rick, I think you know this gentleman, Ryan here. Every time we go out, we catch big fish. <laughs> Man, nice even wahoo. old Ryan can catch them in Guatemala, the Keys, and now right there with you. Tell me quickly about the groupers. Well, this time of year is a great time to run out for grouper because if you're out there uh, trolling for wahoo, you don't find the bait, you don't find the fish, you're in the same area that we target these big pelagic fish. And there are a ton of really good deep bottom spots there. You know, have to little, have a little patience fishing these grouper in these deep spots. Let them take the bait but it's still just a short run, run from where you're trolling. Those oil platforms in the two to 300 foot range hold a variety of grouper species, scamp, gag, strawberry, and if you're lucky, you know, sometimes 40 to 60 pound uh, Warsaw, you know, are, are very accessible. I like to rig with about a 200 pound diamond Momoy leader and a 
I say a nine to about a 12 out trocar hook because that's going to depend on the size of the fish. Always dropping some R and R deep drop rigs with it. Tell me about like the I picture, said, Carl. I gotta go. Tell me about the picture, quick. Okay, uh, this is Bill Pop with a big warsaw. All right, Woo. bud. Thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the R and R tackle hotspots from the Upper Coast region. He says inshore flounder throw in the new penny color in the Berkeley Alive 3-inch shrimp and a quarter ounce jig head along the points and oyster bars and then offshore grouper dropping the baits around the oil platforms two to 300 feet range rigged with 200 pound diamond mile moy and nine to 12 oh trocar hook and r and r tackle deep drop rig if you want to go deeper phew oh good man we, that's the fastest we, you've ever read it was well you got amazing. nicole she's screaming in my ear you know well, the that'll producer happen. Just, that'll happen work wife thank you all She's for joining strange. us we hope you have a beautiful <laughs> weekend out there on the water happy easter we will see you next week Bye.